With the very long-awaited Nintendo Direct in February 2021 came the announcement of many games. One of their big announcements was the announcement of Splatoon 3. There have been many speculations, theories and concepts of Splatoon 3, but we finally have some things confirmed. But of course as of now, we don't know anything besides a 3 minute video and a Twitter thread. So what do I hope to see in Splatoon 3? And what do I think Nintendo will actually do? Probably nothing I'd like to see, that's for sure. Let's talk about gameplay, but more specifically, maps. We got a glimpse of one of the new maps in the trailer. It looks to be set on a desert, possibly showing a clear distinction from modern Nicopolis to the chaotic Splatlands. One thing I hope to see in the new maps is that they're asymmetric. On maps in Splatoon 1 and 2, you can draw a line and clearly see that half of the map is being mirrored on the other side because the developers were lazy or something, I don't know. Realistically, you're not going to go to a museum that has the exact same layout on the other side. And if you do, you're probably in a nightmare and you should probably wake up. In Splatoon 3, it'd be really cool to see maps that are more realistic and aren't just copied and pasted on the other half. By the looks of things, we do choose where we launch ourselves, so it wouldn't really make a difference for Turf War. It would definitely affect the rank modes though. These modes depend on players going on one side of the map instead of all over like in Turf War. But can I see Nintendo doing this? No, probably not. <laughs> However, from a model of the map shown in the trailer, we can see that the grades in the middle aren't symmetric. Whether this is an oversight by the developers or not is still a mystery. I can also see them porting some maps from past games and renovating them to a more chaotic state with dust, sand, and most importantly, a drought. Something Inklings and Octolings should be very happy about. Cause, you know. Now for the game modes. Nintendo. Please give us an offline multiplayer mode. You gave us hell in the Octo expansion, you should be able to do the same here. Hear me out, what if they added ranked modes, but unranked? Sometimes I just want to play the ranked modes without the fear of losing that X rank I got so long ago. Imagine joining an unranked lobby and each game was a different mode, similar to Overwatch's quick play. They would also adjust the mode slightly to have that clear difference between the ranked and unranked mode such as shortening the game from 5 minutes to 3 minutes, and removing overtime. This would also help the new people learn how to play everyone's favourite mode, Clan Blitz, since no one knows how to play it these days. I can see them introducing a new co-op mode since splatting salmon wouldn't really make sense, as we have a small fry as a pet. What would that new co-op be? No idea, it could be anything. Ah yes, the good old single player mode, for everyone who's lonely including myself. But what will make a good single player mode? Personally, I think we should have this thing called the Great Zapfish get stolen, causing the idols to freak out. And the person behind all this isn't actually a person, but it's an octopus who's also a DJ. Oh wait, we've already had that? Darn, I thought I was being original. What a shame. In seriousness though, I do hope Nintendo take a page out of the Octo Expansions book as to how they approach this campaign. It's already looking promising with the train we saw in the announcement trailer, Hopefully they do go ahead with that. Seeing as we'll have a small fry as a pet, maybe salmoners are going extinct from the amount of them Mr. Grizz has made Inklings and Octolings splat out of existence. Now for a message from our sponsor, the subscribe button! Did you know that 0.0% of my viewers watch my videos with Arabic subtitles? Cause I didn't until I saw this. But if you haven't already and you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing. It's free. And free's a pretty good price, you know. I also just recently launched channel memberships, so if you want to help support the channel further, click the join button. Enjoy the rest of the video. We already know what one of the new main weapons is. It, it's, a, it's a bow if you've been living under a rock, more specifically this one. It would be pretty cool to see a crossbow type weapon as well, like how the Nautilus was a different version of the Splatling. That crab we saw in the announcement trailer is apparently a special according to Twitter. It might be used as a turret that moves towards enemies and explodes once it's close. It could also be used to summon other crabs in Splatsville and cause a crab rave. I haven't given too much information of this new special, so it could be anything. But I would like to see the Ink Strike and the Kraken return as revamped specials. It would be interesting to see what they would be like in the world of chaos. Ah yes, our new hub, Splatsville. It probably took the developers 3 seconds to come up with the name, but I think we can all agree that this place looks sick! 
It already looks like that this dystopian Chinatown will have the drawn posts, but what if we could have text posts as well? Like the Miiverse integration in Splatoon 1. That would make the awesome art we see in the square much more appealing than those who are using a controller to draw letters bigger than Mount Everest. One thing that Incopolis Plaza and Incopolis Square lacked in my opinion was the amount of things you could do. In Splatoon 1, there was an arcade machine with a couple minigames on it. In Splatoon 2, there was really only the Squid Beats 2 minigame. Although this is clearly the best part of the game, there isn't really much else to do besides making friends with the locals and staring into the idle souls. Assuming they have any after Chaos 1. Can I see that actually happening? No, unfortunately. There's not really much we can see from the couple of camera angles we have of Splatsville. One thing I really hope Nintendo do mainly because I like the concept of, is the addition of apartments. There are even apartments in Splatsville. It looks like it's a possibility, and it's a very Nintendo thing to do. But Nintendo probably aren't going to do it. But I'll leave a link to Vic's video about this concept in the description, because she has come up with some better ideas than I'll ever come up with. Here are some things I want to see, but I couldn't find a place for them. Customizable private battles. We have a more settings option in the private battle menu, and the only setting is about toggling secondary abilities on gear. It would be pretty cool if we were able to force everyone to use a specific weapon, weapon type, sub-weapon, or even a special. Like some of the stations in the Octo expansion. Then there would be some really epic inkjet battles. What if there were some settings to adjust everyone's speed and jump boost? That would really spice things up in matches. Oh hey, how about that kick button that every single Splatoon streamer really wants? Please, 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 Nintendo. Now for the debate of the century, Splatoon 3's idols. I'd like to see some male idols in Splatoon lore, or at least one half of the duo to be male. We're still yet to see a both Octoling idol duo. Hopefully we'll see that in Splatoon 3 because we've had a Squid's duo, and a one squid and one octo duo. But I think that we'll see another female duo where one is an octoling and the other is a squid. Very original, Nintendo. The single most important event on the Splatoon calendar, the Splatfest. I have a feeling Splatfests are going to work a little differently in this new region of the Splatoon universe. They may not even be called Splatfests. If I could recreate Splatfests, I would rotate each game mode each Splatfest, including the ranked modes but haven't played out in the unranked mode format as I said earlier in the video. This would diverse the Splatfests up a bit, as each one would be very different. If the mode was Clan Blitz, it would make one interesting Splatfest, that's for sure. I think that this is something everyone wants. A replay mode. A place where you can see a recording of your past matches, but with customizable camera options, like in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. This would allow competitive players to take a look at their gameplay and VOD review as the pros call it, and for content creators to get some epic camera angles for their videos. They could even add a free camera mode in the spectator view in private battles. That would be pretty cool. That's all I have to say. What do you hope to see in Splatoon 3? What do you think will actually happen? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video.